Tihanovsky's team of builders of the country for life. You will really be burned on open fire. I am radical. Alexander, we are coming to you. Wait. Crime boss and his teams. Hang up the cops. I answer. He's a complete wacko. Not in still waters. Political culture with an emphasis on violence. Tikhanovsky was captured. Who captured? Revenge. Digital mail. Harassment of dissidents. We wrote we will do something to you, to you and your child. Every family has its herod. Why does Tikhanovsky shout at her mother-in-law? That's it, Sofia Efremovna. That's enough. I understand you. Difficult choice. Politics or money. It is a specific business project of the Tikhanovsky family. And also, the revelations of those who have already visited the land for life. God forbid us from such a president as Tikhanovsky. What kind of Belarus could have become according to Tikhanovsky's scenario? Country for brutality. Watch it now. In the videos, Tikhanovsky presented himself and his team as defenders of the people from bureaucratic arbitrariness. Strong, energetic guys roam the country, looking for those who are dissatisfied with the authorities. They promised them and everyone else to build a country for life. Everything would be fine had Tikhanovsky collected experts for his affair. But in a surprising way, thieves, raiders, drug addicts and even murderers come to ranks of his associates. Is it the team of builders of the country for life? Or is it a team for something else? The forensic archives provide a wealth of information to answer this question. Один из роликов, снятый Гомельским УВД, когда, ну, по камерам видеонаблюдения... It is one of the videos filmed by the Gomel Department of Internal Affairs and the Press Service during one of the processions of Tikhanovsky's group. Then the officers circled in red the faces of those who had been convicted and who could be identified. In this crowd, we then first saw that among his supporters who want to change and make the country for life were those who more often than others violate the rules, including those falling under the criminal code. Criminals striving for politics is a really new phenomenon. Well, our society, the state, had been used to them being as quiet as babies. They hadn't shown themselves before. Еще они тут на люди будут э, показываться. В ближайшие там примерно 20 дней мы будем ездить по самым крупным городам Беларуси, проводить пикеты по сбору подписей, встречаться с людьми. Какая программа у вас? Что там вы будете конкретно? В чем вы профессионалы? Ребята, у нас самая главная задача это поменять вот это вот. Саня, Саня, жди, жди, мы их офицеры к тебе идем, жди нас. Не надо ждать выборов. Пускай только кто-то, сука, задержит кого-то, понимаете? Давайте вместе уже будем строить страну для жизни. Все прекрасно знают мое отношение к мэрам. Если бы это был мужчина, он бы услышал от меня, ну, какой он тварь. Disrespecting the authorities, insulting the authorities, it is definitely something new in the political culture. Мэр, женщина, ну, вы реально тварь, я вам честно скажу. Вас будут реально потом сжечь на кострах. Vladimir Neronsky, by his example, shows the main message of Tikhanovsky's country for life, incitement to reprisals against officials, and who does not agree will be a punching bag. Мне уже стыдно за белорусов, что я белорус. Терпилы, нация, терпила уже друг друга ненавидят. The criminal vocabulary in the mouth of Neronsky is not surprising. The man who teaches Belarusians how to build a country for life is a thief. Поэтому испалили табакерку, потому что кто-то увидел, как его деревня родная, любимая пропадает. Before working as an activist for Tikhanovsky's political career, Vladimir Neronsky was a smuggler in Slutsk. Who knows better about the theft but him? In 2001, he was listed as an individual entrepreneur. His entrepreneurship consisted, for example, in attempt to steal 20 bags of milk powder from a cheese-making plant. Neronsky, who received them over the fence, was apprehended with the ninth one. Having tried a lot of jobs, Neronsky came into the Tikhanovsky's view and the latter made him a blogger. 
Wagging the tongue is not the same as stealing bags with milk powder. It's not as hard as to work in the field. He didn't manage to enter the government on blogging. Neronsky got a new prison stretch three years in a strict regimen, including for his insulting officials. A thug, I can't name him in another way, a complete thug, a scumbag from the 90s, that is what Tikhanovsky is. He attracted people like himself, for whom breaking the law, not caring about the rules in the society is a norm. His brazen demeanor, his conversational style attracts the same goons. And he thought he was so advanced, stuffed with technology, a mixture of a criminal with a blogger, as he calls himself, although I see him as an apparent hooligan. Another activist of the country for life, Alexander Zhuryptsov, has a homicide on his conscience. He is officially a repeat offender, 40 years of criminal experience. He stole, was imprisoned. After his release, the thief's life continued as if nothing had happened. Having become hardened, Zhuryptsov switched to robbery and raids. Sometimes he committed another crime two days after the previous one. Well, that is how to visit a store for bread. After serving a 10-year sentence, he and his brother attacked the guard of the Vitebsk Building Design Institute. They broke the man's skull with a truncheon. He died. After his release, Zhuryptsov began to fake money and documents. Well, and he suddenly found himself among the activists of the country for life. Why could Tikhanovsky need such a type living in a country of continuous criminality? We, the judge, said, you remember that there was on 12 October 1967 in Slutsky. He remembers. They were burned. There were people together with the judge. He remembers. The laws have to understand. Today there is one fire. Tomorrow there will be two. Get registered in the initiative group. Мы на Запорожце были. Что они хотели? Или денег с нас что-то спровоцировать, что-то? Я не понимаю даже вообще, что это. Чего хотели вообще? Что это вообще? Непонятно. Remember the gangs from the 1990s? People who came across them are still terrified of these lads. The thugs could attack a random person simply because they didn't like him or her. Смотрим, это машина. И они нам раз на перерез вдруг остановили. А я еще говорю, во, больные. Просто показала, говорю, вы что, больные? Вот. И они вдруг, а этот там один показывает именно за точку. A company on a Zaporozhets was returning from the Minsk lake. On the highway, the smallest Soviet car was cut in ahead and blocked by the Mikhadyuk brothers' gang. In the 1990s, they made a nightmare in the Minsk region. One of them was 21, the other was 18. They robbed summer cottages as part of the brigade with two more accomplices. They also hacked parked cars. Конечно, был удар под их волнение было это понятно, что я не Брамович, мы все рабочие люди, парни не на тот путь ставили, не на тот путь они избрали, не тот жизненный путь. Вы забирали мне, короче, с двух машин колеса с запасками, фары. Бампер, короче, внутри полазили, салоне, балайки, короче, поворотники. Ну, в общем, что все, что можно было снять, отодрать. They didn't disdain just lawlessness. Well, what profit could there be from the owners of the little Zaporozhets? Only to make fun of the people. Они не спрашивали, они вышли сразу за майку. Он ударил, я думала, кулаком, а у него был вот здесь сжат камень. И он этому поле по голове. Но я думала, он кулаком дал. Почему я подумала камнем? Потому что там было рассечено кулаком, как не дать. А у него, кажется, камень был. The boulder smashed the man's head, but he survived. Women were not spared either. Маша там защищала, ей палец сломали. Ей вытавшие они были, во-первых. Это одно еще. Что от них ни слов, капитана ни слов. The drunken chaos ended for the brothers in sobering prison terms. The younger was sentenced to two years, the elder got seven, with confiscation. And now, after a while, those who plagued people's lives go into politics to build a country for life. To begin with, they should have begged for forgiveness from the victims of their crimes. Раскаяние или слова там извините я не услышал от них. Есть категория людей, 
которые ну, природой им предназначено идти таким путем, мне так кажется, не знаю, думаю, что парни исправиться смогли или нет, наверное, думаю, что нет. Это мрази и подонки, и вот эти люди, когда поменяется власть, их, сука, надо судить всех и вешать. Понимаете? Моя судимость, это проблема Лукашенко будет. Нам нужен повод для протестов. Он сразу пусть нам его дает, и мы начнем. Три месяца у нас времени раскачать ситуацию. Кстати, нам броневик уже готовят. Красится сейчас. Ну, это не шутка. Там, кстати, будет несколько броневиков. А он пускай хоть башкой своей дурной там стучит. На первых порах им действительно многое сходило с рук. Вот эти на камеру заявления or as they say, a regime. All ordinary people want peace in the streets, they want security. Imagine you come to a doctor's appointment and you are welcomed by a drug addict in a white gown. Surgeon of the Berezino Central Hospital, Dmitry Alexandrov, first injected himself at home. Then he began doing it right at work, in the toilet. Before becoming a representative of Tikhanovsky's country for life, Dmitry Alexandrov received patients and took psychotropics. Being gowed up, he made diagnosis to people with fractures, bone fragments inside. Войдя в кабинет, где вел прием врач Александров, я увидела, что его физическое состояние было заторможенным. At some point, his behavior became completely inadequate. A narcologist entered Dr. Alexandrov's office for examination right during his reception of patients. What he found shocked the staff. He secretly used the seals of his colleagues to forge recipes for psychotropics. Tramadol, Dimitrol, Diazepam. A pipe for smoking marijuana was found during a search. Imagine a guy like this, for example, as the health minister. Протест он начнется, если забастовка может общая белорусская. Все, и это ежедневно будет. Две годины из тезика поставить свою подпись. Ну, мы не стоим, чтобы поставить свою подпись. У нас нет такой цели. Стоим, чтобы показать, что мы есть, что мы протест. However, one drug addict, well, maybe it's an accident. But when there is a whole constellation of them in the country for life, what kind of country is this? Dmitry Lukomsky became famous for his basement apartment. There was cannabis packaged in paper rolls. When caught, he tried to convince the investigation that he had found them. Главное, что мы показываем, мы ногами показываем свой протест, ногами. Вот, вот мы, белорусы, мы против, мы хотим перемен. Вот, а за это, собственно говоря, люди приходят. Another activist, Andrew Slabucho, was also convicted for drug possession. He got caught on the street with amphetamine long before his political work. Я даже не предположил, что там могло находиться наркотическое вещество. Когда я подобрал сверток, я только попробовал на вкус порошкообразное вещество и после этого положил сверток в портмоне. Before these testimonies, he gave different ones. He confessed that he had suggested that to be a drug. And then he began to deny. He had just simply saved a package with an unknown powder. Amazing stories are told by people from the Tikhanovsky's initiative group. Put yourself in his shoes. Let's say you find a small package with some kind of powder. Will you taste it? What if it's rat poison? I am a radical sam po sebe, no, держу в руках. Tikhanovsky also had people like Andrew Novikov who spoke openly. Non-peaceful intentions are the way to the country for life. Хорошо, нет, мы. Я военный бывший, участник боевых действий и так далее и тому подобное. Я очень радикально с кем-то пошел. Мне проще там создать эту боевую ячейку. Но я, но я, это не наш метод. Но я, 
Оборонять свою радио. Понимаете, но я система нужна. Нужна любой системы наоборот системы. Системы нет. Так, выскочили туда, сюда, акты. Покричали, разобидели, и все так тихонько. Three times convicted Alexander Aronovich, another activist of the country for life, has also never given a damn about the norms of society. In the town of Staria Dorogi, he had a favorite bar, Maxim. Only the bartenders were unlucky there. He beat one of them to a fracture of a cheekbone, and two years later, in the same Maxim, he smashed a glass on the bartender's face, so that his temple, forehead, and even neck were cut. The bartender was taken to the hospital with his face being a bloody mess. Alexander Aronovich was sentenced to almost four years. Did he correct himself when he was freed? No, just changed the drinking joint. He started visiting the Julia Cafe. However, Alexander's bestial habits did not change there. When he was taken drunk from there to the police, he beat the district police officer right in the police station, because the officer did not allow him to smoke in the room. In the country for life, there are apparently different norms for people like Aronovich. Idiot, who called the police. Dmitry Popov became notorious in Russia after he created there an analog of the Ukrainian peacemaker the information resource scanner. It posted the personal data of the Russian security officials. Popov indeed disappeared after the launch of the technologies of the de-anonymization of civilians and security officials and attempts to Maidanize the situation in Russia. Around the same time, the practice of massive persecution of supporters of the current government appeared in Belarus. Through the internet, Tikhanovsky personally launched some of the hate flash mobs. А сейчас мы попробуем взять интервью у наших чиновников. Простите, вы прикорытник? Вы прикорытник, простите. And now the army of hamsters begins to rush above the profiles of government officials in the social networks with offensive epithets from Tikhanovsky. The election campaign was just beginning, but the closer to the election, the more aggressive the bullying of officials, state media journalists and even their relatives became. In June, there was a pressure on my family. My parents are persistent, but my younger sister, it was unpleasant for me. And among those who dashed on me were my acquaintances. I managed to talk to them. One of them immediately said he had succumbed to the disruptive influence of the Telegram channels. And we had more detailed conversation with the second. You know me, you know my attitude towards my sister, and you know what she is. What did she get it for? He answered something like this. We perfectly understood that trying to put pressure on you was absolutely useless, that you would not succumb to our threats, you will continue working. Therefore, we needed to go through a sore spot. I thought that the sore spot is just your sister. The scale of the attack and the search for the weakness of the victims of bullying indicate that this process was under centralized control. They looked for supporters of the current government and hit the most vulnerable spots – their relatives, children. The data of the most significant people were replicated in Telegram channels with hints for the audience. You know what to do. And the army of trolls pounced on the pages and declassified personal phone numbers of the victims. Women reacted very emotionally. This is the most disgusting thing. They pressed women by their children. They wrote, we'll do something to you and your child. They communicated very closely with each other. They discussed the methodology a lot. And there were people in these chats trained in the technology to press the system, the security officials, journalists and others. Dmitry Popov, who disappeared from Russia, appeared in Tikhanovsky's team. He was told what his job would be like. Uh, 
in Gomel, the operator of the country for life, Artyom Sakov, provided him with a safe apartment. Popov moderated the organization's social networks, and also he taught how to arrange the persecution of unwanted people to find their personal data. Если брать объемные цифры, то это более 450 наших коллег-журналистов, которые... If we take general figures, it is more than 450 of our fellow journalists who, to some degree, faced bullying, harassment, threats over the phone. There were also physical assaults, attacks on property, a car was burned, doors were thrown, some smeared baby carriages in the vestibule, some threatened children, they visited schools and kindergartens. Every fourth of our colleagues has been subjected to such tyranny or violence. However, most of all, the personal data of those who are at the forefront of the defense of the state, the security forces, were declassified in the public domain. Those who try to find the address, personal data, especially of his family, must understand that they crossed the red line, a forbidden line, and let them prepare to carry responsibility before us, before the law and before us personally. Because if the law is a little late, officers of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and internal troops will not allow members of their families to be in danger. These people came to a dangerous service. They won't let these criminals and non-criminal outlaws to reveal the data. So so that our wives and children live in fear. No, earlier you will wash yourselves with your desire to identify us. Vyacheslav Eismond actively campaigned for Tikhanovsky in the town of Bobruisk. If you knew the biography of this next representative of the country for life, not everyone would let him into his apartment. He had been caught in the theft of jewelry and phones, but he became famous as a man ready to kill for pouring a bottle of vodka into the toilet. Я плакала и просила меня отпустить. У меня началась истерика, он силой заволок меня за руку в квартиру, где я упала в коридоре. As soon as the door slammed, Вячеслав dragged her into the kitchen by the hair, and now he is testimony. Ввиду того, что был пьян, то всей последовательности не помню. Пытаясь успокоить ее, взял с кухонного стола нож, приставил к ее шее и сказал: "Уйди, сука, пока я тебя не убил". Just think of the logic here. The woman is trying to break out of this terrible apartment, and he drags her back in and puts a knife to her throat, yells at her to leave. She was just saved by another drinking companion. Многие спрашивают, что такое антиамон. Это секретное оружие против пособников таракана. Это микроавтобус или автобус с женщинами. И амон у нас сразу же понимает, что Ничего не может сделать. Мы будем продолжать борьбу до тех пор, пока он не уйдет. Неважно в каком статусе. Сторож пришел, спрашивает, ребята, вы что сегодня пойдете пешком? Почему пешком? А где ж машина? На стоянке. А он такой шутник, ну, под, подтрунивал все время. What was once yours will now be mine. This is apparently Alexander Barodich's principle. He was also an activist of the country for life. At one point, he got caught after hijacking several cars. Making car audios to pay for drinks, stealing cars to get money for a New Year's party. Why did Tikhanovsky need such people in his team, the ones with Stone Age ethics? Get together in a mob and take whatever you want if you are strong enough. Three подростка было. Ну и все. Суд уголовное им им. Водка делает свое дело. То бишь они считают, что это антураж круто, ну никакого раскаяния. Вот такие тапки тоже каждый может изготовить, каждый, каждый может изготовить такие тапки, принести на пикеты нашей группе отдать. Нужно больше тапков, больше тапок железных, ну и большего размера. Эти тапки потом станут щитами, возможно, на мирных протестах. А у амоновцев свои щиты, у нас будут железные тапки. Эти люди. These people, for whom, as you quoted the proverb, prison is like home, they are professional criminals, urkas as they call themselves. Yes, these criminals have a special definition, they are the people, and the rest apparently are not the people.
That is, they recognize their own circle, their own rules, knowing full well that they have set themselves against the majority. They consider themselves special in some way. Well, the best of them, if I may even say so, have some ethics, rules, dignity, a kind of honor, some kind of code of conduct, while they are really unhinged ones have nothing. They are selfish. They live as they want. You are supposed to adjust to them, because these wackos are not afraid of prison. Well, I'll serve my stretch, and then I'll make up for it. Prison does not correct these people's behavior. Hand brake missing, no brake hose, passing a yearly safety check with such a car is no problem if you do it at Pyotr Tulko's, an auto mechanic from Molodechno. Witness statement. I said I had a ball tire at the back, a broken tail light, bad braking system. Then I asked Tulko how much. He replied that $10 would be enough for him, and he took the bill himself. How many potential killer cars did Pyotr Tulko let run on the road? It is not known. Based on the proven corpus delicti, the court sentenced him to six years of high security prison. After serving his term, the criminal auto mechanic, who was no longer allowed to issue fake certificates for cars en route to the realm of death, ended up in Tikhanovsky's country for life. Masками, давая личность Тихановского, назвав его и гопником и упырем, я еще раз. And as for calling Tikhanovsky both a thug and a ghoul, just look at his behavior at the pretrial facility. We saw it during the meeting with the head of state, how he behaved there, how he spoke about the family members, right? Как он отзывался о членах семьи, да? И And I repeat, such characters are drawn to each other, like to like. It is clear that this is a natural bully who does not give a damn about the rules of the society. And what is most disgusting is that he pretends to speak for the people, for justice, nothing of the kind. He is not even close. This is ordinary bowling, window dressing, working on camera for the public, insulting the head of state, public figures. This is a devil-may-care attitude towards the society. Главы государства, каких-то авторитетов, это и есть наплевательское отношение к обществу. Стоп, таракан! Живя Беларусь! Люди изготавливают большие тапки, чтобы прихлопнуть тараканы. Нужно выходить и выходить и показывать массовый протест, ребят. Приехали бы человек 50 с автоматами, с оборудованной все как надо, засели бы. И мы специально подстроили такую штуку, что вот там вышли, крикнули, сказали, и тут милиция нас раз хватать. И их только под прицелом сразу в голову, сразу раз, раз, раз и поснесло. Все, у нас бы все переменилось, поменялось бы все. Владимир Мунякин was one of those people who were excited by the Tikhanovsky's videos. They started imagining that their time had come. And it has long been known, birds of a further flock together. So Munyakin, who lives by the principle, there is a sucker born every minute, saw in Tikhanovsky a similar-minded person and a chance to get away with fraud. I bought 14 units for 200 dollars on 2800 dollars. Then the next one, in one of the videos, I saw that он берет, берет деньги на год на развитие проекта под проценты, так? Но я ему тоже сдал деньги. Пенсионер Владимир Погорелов is one of those who entrusted his money with Munyakin. The latter was operating some kind of a Ponzi scheme, offering to invest a ruble and get out with more. In fact, the principle was to deceive people and live at their expense. Если вы настраиваетесь ищите работу, то вы значит вы раб Божий. Ну, не боже, конечно, а работник. Работник, который постоянно ищет работу, ищет зарплату и, в общем, мучается так до конца жизни. Here you have the philosophy of a criminal who finds that having a job is beneath him. Such persons just live off other people. Но я не думал, что столько много людей поверит. А когда знакомился с материалами проверки, там действительно много людей поверило, буквально там 700, 800. When the misled depositors began demanding a return of at least the money Munyakin had taken without the interest, he began threatening them. Он берет на своем сайте, вылаживает. 
это сам, информацию, что сайт закрыт, поскольку на него подали в милицию. Никто не будет получать выплаты, пока я нет, не вышлю отказ от всех претензий ему лично и в милицию. И вылаживает мой адрес, и домашний телефон, и паспортные данные. That's some familiar acting. It comes as no surprise that after watching Tikhanovskiy, Vladimir Munyakin decided to go into politics and also began urging people to attack the police. Уничтожать милиционера даже, не боясь, что нас тоже накажут. Ну, если один, два, три, двадцать, сто случаев таких было бы, то мы перевернули бы все. Захватили Тихановского, кто захватил? Фотография, месть, полностью семьи, понимаете? Тайна, скрыта, чтобы не поймали никого, внезапно уничтожить эту семью, уничтожить другую семью. Месть за месть. Тогда в этом случае все поменялось бы. Он выступает как провокатор. Что он начинает? Уже в своих роликах начинает. Выйдем все на улицу, потратим один час жизни, скинем эту власть, а смириться я договорюсь. Как поп гапон Я думаю, Тихановский заработает э, миллион долларов просто на вас, на дураках. Заработает и бросит это дело, ему это не надо. When things got too hot for him, Munyakin instantly fled abroad. Вот кто-то меня упрекает, что вот приезжайте, ну что я приеду, вот я вышел на улицу, дальше-то что? Вот. Собрал Тихановский за полгода 3000 человек или 5, дальше-то что? Ну можно собрать, да, дикарей можно собрать, можно э, ну, безграмотных людей собрать. Знаете, э, в кандидатах нету никого сейчас, вот, кроме Лукашенко, я скажу, я не за него, нет. Кроме нету никого грамотных людей, которые могли собрать бы, ну не то что толпу, нет. Это есть у Лукашенко право такое вас разогнать в определенный момент времени. И все, и больше ничего, и вы разбежитесь как куры. It's as if he knew it. He took his chance, but got burned, as criminals would say. Я поэтому здесь нахожусь в России, потому что я вижу шансов победить у вас нет. Понимаете, о чем речь? All the other fugitives left Belarus exactly for the same reason. All of them clearly understand what's really going on, and they are happily raking in the dough while there is an opportunity, cashing in on those who do not understand this. Со Светланой Георгиевной даже можно сфотографироваться. А то спрашивали, где жена, я говорю, ну, в Гродно будет. О, чуть не упала, видишь? Только протест массовый и все. Ну и в инициативной группы записывайтесь. И давайте вместе построим страну для жизни. Any political campaign, especially one as large scale and costly as that by Tikhanovsky, requires constant cash injections. The cost of fuel for just one caravan driving around the country is already a tidy sum. It is clear that people who accuse officials of dishonesty and declare their right to improve the country must be crystal clear themselves. Скажите, пожалуйста, так это ваши все-таки деньги или нет? А где вы их взяли, заработали? Да, как где? Я зарабатываю, я зарабатываю. Деньги принадлежат вам непосредственно. Непосредственно? Нет. Сколько здесь, какая сумма? The nine hundred thousand dollars found in Tikhanovsky's house immediately indicated that someone was lying in this family. Tikhanovsky and his wife disowned the money, while the mother, Sofia Yefremovna, immediately stated that yes, the pile of bills hidden behind the sofa was theirs, and no one had planted them. На вот эту, как это, ой, как пунктированный пункт, где он там хотел строить эту, ой, как это, ой, ну, крауц, не, как она, коровыша, не, как называется это, где он хотел строить, не дачу, а как она называется? Я поняла вас. А? Я вас поняла, Алло. хорошо. Я ну, вас вот поняла. Вот, да, я вспомнила. Я когда-то убирала там, я тоже... Все, я... Софья Ефремовна, хватит, все, я вас поняла. Да. Так мне не говорить? Ничего. 
Svetlana Tikhanovskaya's hysteria is understandable. The confessions of her mother-in-law made her look very bad. After all, the day before, she nonchalantly stated that if she and Sergei had had that kind of money, they would have never gotten into politics just for some people's rights. Her words exactly. Over the time of his trips around the country, Sergei Tikhanovsky became widely regarded among his own team as a pathological miser and a dishonest person known to screw over his own people. Потому что Саков постоянно говорил, что Тихановский то задерживает, то платит меньше, чем обещал, то постоянно откладывает, там да, договорились два раза в месяц оплачивают, в итоге он раз в месяц его отдает эти деньги. Вот. Постоянно говорил, что, ну, как вам сказать, отдает эти деньги, как как будто бы подачку какую-то отдает. И потом уже ближе к переговорной кампании, когда все это закрутилось уже в таком масштабе, как было. Artyom Sakov is Tikhanovsky's personal cameraman, who literally knows him to the inch. The funny thing is that, being actually a dollar millionaire and having various sources of funding for his political career, the leader of the country for life was extremely reluctant to shell out money. With the help of Edward Babariko's crowdfunding platforms Uli and Mola Mola, Tikhanovsky raised funds through the internet for the goals of an alleged political campaign. Thus, over just a few months at the beginning of 2020, Tikhanovsky raised more than $16,000, according to the testimony of witnesses as well as those who received remuneration from Tikhanovsky for certain actions they performed. Everyone knows his stinginess and tight-fistedness, unwillingness to pay and manipulative usage of enthusiasm of his so-called confederates. One gets the impression that the events of 2020 are some business project of the Tikhanovsky family. And does Tikhanovsky's country for life have a prototype of any kind? Certainly, it is the Ukrainian Maidan, only more violent, it seems. Даже лучшие ребята. И даже лучше хочу. В Украине сейчас стало лучше, чем было. Вы знаете, на примере соседнего государства, где постоянно Майдан... You know, let's look at the neighboring country, where there are permanent revolutions, Майдан. And these Майданс only became possible because the police were neutralized in advance. Media working for the opposing side staged a prolonged attack on them, using any defamation of the police, any criminal cases, appeals by citizens, the behavior of police officers, their appearance, facts of corruption on the part of the police, of personal misconduct, are all very effective. In other words, it was a long-term information attack, a way to tell people in advance that law enforcement officers are bad, they are not as they should be, they need to be replaced, and the goal is to demoralize the officers so that they should feel under attack. Downtrodden, intimidated, should not feel supported by the majority, should think they are no longer supported by the people, and also to make them think that they serve some kind of a regime, some kind of a dictator, a king, a president, but not the people. This is intended to affect the morale of the police officers, that they were afraid to go too far, become indecisive. Ukraine is an example to follow. Those were not empty words, neither a figure of speech. The Tikhanovskis were preparing a Ukraine-like violence scenario to seize power in Belarus, a bloody Maidan. For this, they needed people who were ready to break the law, to attack the police. That is why Tikhanovskaya was talking about taking control of government buildings already on the eve of the election day. The recording itself shows that we are not talking about any kind of peaceful protest. We are talking about forceful actions aimed at breaking into buildings. People are discussing how they will do it, how they will seize administrative buildings, police stations. Moreover, people at this meeting already start assigning government positions. Более того, люди на этом совещании уже начинают делить должности. 
The meeting held by Svetlana Tikhanovskaya on the eve of August 9 reveals the last pages of the scenario for the seizure of power. First, an alternative fake voting was needed only to escalate the situation in Belarus. Secondly, the country for life managed to set up a network of people who, at the right time, were to take to the street and help seize government buildings. Чем мы это делали? Мы понимаем, что в э, 9 числу, когда вот этот э, градусный протест после фальсификации находится, значит, мы будем людей собирать э, в доме. Гомел was to become the first city they planned to take over completely. Значит, есть у нас определенный план, как это делать, а есть определенный алгоритм. Значит, мы 7 числа выходим в подполье, есть у нас люди, которые будут вышить это. Вот мы будем его дистанционно э, Here's a very important point. Tikhanovska perfectly understands the worth of the so-called popular protest. It is non-existent. It is being stirred up by the very network of the Country for Life activists they set up. It's a good show, but it is short-lived and crumbles, exposing a skeletal frame made of Tikhanovsky's people. Therefore, Svetlana's question of how long people will keep on protesting is vitally important. They only need a blitzkrieg, otherwise everyone will see through the fake character of the protest, realize that it is a fiction created by a minority. In conclusion, seizure of power by force is the only chance. The Little Eight had a most lively discussion of technical issues in their closet, from paying money to purchasing the necessary special equipment. Well, and the weakest point of the country for life is still the same, the lack of mass support. This is clear to everyone at the table. There is no way back for the conspirators, and the country for life is banking on the violence and brutality which had marked the entire of Sergei Tikhanovsky's campaign. Here, attention, the conspirators are trying to smooth out the harsh word capture. Why? Because this means blood and serious crime. How many people would leave the street if they call everything by their proper names? But the main thing is said by Tikhanovskaya – just take power. And at this moment they can be taken red-handed. Hang up the cops, I answer. Когда к власти рвутся, как вы упомянули, уголовники, то чего от них можно ожидать, допустим, And when criminals, as you said, rush to power, then what can be expected from them, from their victory? They will not become obedient in an instant. And everyone understands perfectly well that these are criminals, and they will remain criminals forever under any regime, under any president, under any social economic formation. And I'm sure people don't want that. Would they hang the police and then become law enforcement officers themselves? It's ridiculous. Перевешали бы милицию и потом сами бы стали правоохранителями? Ну, смешно. The plans to capture government facilities finally shed light on Tikhanovsky's intentions and provided an answer to the question of why they needed all these criminals in the initiative group. The goal was to steal the country using ways from the 1990s. And how would the people, for whom violation of the law is the norm, who managed to comfortably arrange their own lives, defend the interests of more than 9 million Belarusians, a country for whose life exactly were they going to build, if not a criminal's den?
Out of 252 members of the Country for Life's initiative group, every fifth had been involved in criminal activities. 46 had been charged with criminal offenses. 13 people are repeat offenders.